Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. We'll be talking about uh, the constitutional crisis uh, that is being seen as far as the Punjab government is concerned. We're currently looking at uh, the largest province of the country without uh, functioning perpetually without a CM at this time. Of course, um, uh, the last CM, Buzdar Sab, has been asked to continue in, terim, in, in this kind of an interim situation. But overall, we'll be talking about the ramifications of this kind of a crisis on the bureaucracy, on the working of the Punjab government. We've seen um, Hamza Shahbaz Sharif, uh, you know, go to uh, courts again and again in, in, a, in an attempt to get an order from uh, the Lahore High Court, uh, which would then be followed by the governor um, and uh, pursuant to the directions of uh, the president. But again, there seems to be some, some kind of a deadlock and we'll be exploring that, we'll be talking about that. Um, and later on uh, in the program, we'll also be talking about Pakistan-China relations um, in the background of uh, the terrorist attack, the deliberate attempt to sabotage Pakistani a relationship with China um, and overall impact of this kind of terrorism, uh, Pakistan being targeted time and again, uh, the way that we have suffered at the hands of this kind of terrorism vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, our relationship with other countries, bilateral relations, all of that today on perspective. Um, I have with me Balik Sher Khosa, who's a legal expert. Um, Rafiq Rajwana, former governor, uh, from also f a leader from PMLN. We'll be talking um, about the political side of things as far as Punjab is concerned, as far as the um, impending oath of uh, 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 incumbent uh, Chief Minister Punjab, uh, Hamza Shahbaz Sharif is concerned, and the very real crisis that uh, Punjab faces at this time. Uh, with these two guests. Ji, I'm going to go to Barak Sher Khosa Sab. Ji, um, Khosa, overall, as far as this crisis is concerned, you've seen that we are uh, in the midst, it's, it's more than three weeks now, we've seen the election happen. Of course, uh, in the background of uh, how it happened as far as uh, the, you know, the, the acrimony that exists between uh, PTI and PMLN, we've also seen um, you know, the, the, the furor that happened in uh, the Punjab Assembly, all of those things, but overall it was done. Uh, the kind of delay that we are seeing at this time, would you say that it's unprecedented? Would you say that, uh, you know, what are the chances of this deadlock uh, eventually, um, you know, uh, there being a solution? How do you see things? Well, we are in a state of uh, nowhere, nor we are on the earth, nor we are in the air. Anyway, it's a political dilemma, and uh, I think so the democracy mm. and the political system is on the verge of its, mm. uh, it's on the ventilator. And I mm. think so, uh, uh, if I being one party and I being mm. the prime minister or the chief minister mm. of the province, and if I mm. lack uh, the confidence of the parliamentarian, the best way, the democratic way, is that to accept somebody's majority and to step mm. down. But I think so. It's uh, it's uh, like uh, not giving. A, it's the biggest province of the country with the majority of the people living over here, and you don't have a chief minister. The chief. It is not only the chief minister. It is the cabinet which makes the government and which makes the chief minister run the show. And right. if, uh, if you say it, the Sahib is going to be the a continuing as a chief minister, he is only a chief mm. minister who runs from one docket to another docket. He is only a signing mm. authority for daily works to be done. So, mm. in this situation where the judgment of the Honorable Lahore High Court Law, Honorable Chief Justice Lahore High Court Law, is very much now than clear that he has uh, said in his judgment that under Article 104 of the Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, which needs to be implemented in its total, in which he has clearly said so, so if the governor well, wants to Well, except overall, as, court, far as, as far as the order of the High Court is concerned, uh, do you think it could have been more direct? Do you think it could have been, um, you know, more, uh, I don't know what the word would be. Um, instead of using the word suggested, it could have been, you know, perhaps different words could have been used. Do you think there's a chance that the High Court could have nominated somebody else to take the oath? Uh, you know, perhaps that could have led to the diffusion of this kind of crisis earlier? See, this would be a collision of powers then. 
because high court has to make the implementations of the constitution mm. high court cannot directly direct anybody ke now on behalf of the president of pakistan has been the chief justice or high court of the chief justice of pakistan direct so and so that he should direct somebody you think to appoint you're somebody saying that the high court doesn't have the power minister. to dom- nominate anyone to take the oath instead of the the governor when the governor absolutely is not. obviously unable absolutely Gee, not i could can only direct to men i could can only direct to implement the constitution so that's mm. what i could did and that is mm. in proper with the jurisdiction exercised by the i could in the cardinals mm. with the law hmm sorry i don't think i i, I think there's a problem and, with audio are you getting my voice Gee, hello now now i can hear you please continue said the high court in its constitutional jurisdiction exercised its constitutional powers and can only direct the constitutional provisions to be implemented by the authority that is the president of pakistan which the high court has exercised now the question comes if the president does not nominate anybody from the if anyone the governor or the speaker if they don't to a court then he can appoint anybody chairman of the senate or the speaker of the national assembly to take the oath and if he differs then there is a very, very serious constitutional crisis they may face article 6 they may face the contempt of court but i have failed to understand we the nation as being the media as being the lower community as being the judiciary as being the people of pakistan we need to think on a very very serious note because it is going to be a head collision of the institution but what do you think will happen which is now? not good what for do you think pakistan in your opinion how far uh, in your opinion how far can this be delayed uh, you know as far as the oath is concerned is it going to be is it a possibility that it can be delayed indefinitely certainly not so you know at best it's really a delaying tactic right that's how one can look at it i think so they are heading towards collision and what else article 6 can be attracted this is the end of the constitution heard, you know we also as far yes. as the punjab assembly session is concerned it was called and then just before the session it was then uh, you know again revoked and now it's I, i i think it's going to be held on the 16th again so that's also and then there was no confidence uh, again uh, you know on the agenda the no confidence against the deputy speaker so overall as far as the disrupt disruption in uh, the political affairs of the province are concerned that is quite you know um, obvious and that is continuing now Uh, for more than three and a half weeks, and that of course has its own repercussions. That has its own ramifications. Um, you know, for regardless of uh, uh, political parties, regardless of how things are looking at this time, uh, the affairs of the state, uh, the affairs of the province, um, are in limbo. Wouldn't you say? Absolutely, and I think so. This this whole trash and and brain to the uh, ground. Mm. It it mm. is being. only the pti government and the opposition now they are only responsible for this mm. because mm. if you have lost your majority accept it let mm. them run the show let the mm. elections come let the people select elect you by voting for god sake equity on pakistan what has been done in madina sharif where it is written so you don't have to loud your voice and what you have been doing there in spite of mm. any political affiliation for god sake be you human be you be a human and in the biggest province of punjab there is no government there is no chief minister there is no writ of the government and there is no policies which has to be laid down where we are heading towards the, and i don't know what next is going to be i think so it's the, you are forcing the courts you are pushing the courts to words the article 6 to be implemented or the contempt i don't know where you are heading towards hmm right um overall as far as legally speaking is concerned again i i want to know what your legal opinion is about this now uh once we as i understand it hamza shahbaz sharif has again gone to court um as far as contempt is concerned of course contempt proceedings against the governor um, you know in office he enjoys certain immunity right uh so if he, the court can't really um, go there un- unless you know he's out of office 
um, you are saying that the court doesn't have the power to nominate anybody else. But there are some, I mean, there are two opinions on that also. You know, how, how can the court diffuse this crisis? How can the court step in? Uh, to, you know, of course, it, it is something that has to be done and it cannot be delayed uh, for, the, for as long as, you know, of course, there's a 25 days period um, at best that can um, actually be taken and three weeks have already elapsed. How do you, do you think that it will, how long do you think will it take? How long can they delay it? Let's see that in terms of considering what the government is going to respond, what they are going to correspond that why we have not maintained the directions of the honorable court because mm. the court has to you see the court has all the powers as when uh, you see the case of uh, uh, yusuf al girani till rising of the court the prime minister is convicted so the court has all the powers when we are not implementing the constitution mm. as regard as you see they, they, they have ousted the courts have ousted two prime ministers if they have ousted two prime ministers and I don't think so there is any hurdle if the constitution is not being implemented as the directive suggested by the high court. Then lately, the, I mean, face a very, very serious constitutional legal visit, which is not good for the country, which might lead towards the forces who are quiet and mum right now. So I think so. We should be vigilantly well, sir, implementing you saw, the You mentioned yourself, and you know we all know what happened uh, in Medina. Also, we know what happened in Islamabad. Also, as far as you know, the the increase in intolerance, the polarization that we are seeing, as far as uh, you know, between the two main political parties, between the government uh, side of things, and as far as uh, PTI is particularly concerned, even today. Uh, when uh, Imran Khan spoke to people in Multan, he talked about jihad. Um, you know, he talked about retaliation and uh, all of those things. And then, of course, the call to come to Islamabad. Um, you know, as far as after Eid, he said, we are, you know, Eid is right around the corner. It is also uh, getting increasingly hot in this kind of uh, an atmosphere overall. Um, the next couple of weeks can be crucial. Um, you know, we don't want, like you also mentioned, the kind of unrest uh, that can happen, the kind of, uh, you know, strife that can happen. Uh, because, you know, we are seeing intolerance. We are seeing as far as, you know, we, we are seeing fighting happen. It happened earlier on also, um, you know, at, at a hotel. We saw the video of that. Now new videos have surfaced, the kind of uh, fighting, the kind of abuse, uh, the kind of physical assaults that, that are happening. Um, are we regressing? Have we gone back into the 90s? How do you look at this? I think so. We have gone back in before 1947, not 90s. And we need to, as a nation, we need to behave, even the parliamentarians who are in power, who are in opposition. They are leading towards anarchy. They are leading towards bloodshed. They are leading leading towards the killing they are leading towards the people should beat each other the parties workers are going to fight i don't know where we are heading towards let's accept your defeat let's accept your fear. let's accept you have not you cannot deliver when you talk about year. acceptance, there is, uh, of course, you know, when you, when you call and you when you tell your followers to go for jihad, when you, in, you know, it's I don't know what to call it. It's an incitement or, uh, you know, for the lack of a better word, asking them to come for dharna, all of these things. Um, you know, of course, on the one side, there is this debate that protesting peacefully is part, inherent part of freedom of expression. Um, also part of democracy and one can't, uh, you know, condemn or one can't fault uh, any political leader for asking their followers to do those things. But the point is things are, it you seems, should, quickly getting out of control. You see, we should stop misusing the word, the, the, the word jihad. We should misusing the religious words mm -hmm. which are not used for this moment. The jihad is only there when you have to fight against the far, when you have to mm. fight against non-Muslims, when your mm. your borders, your boundaries are being breached by the uh, by non-Muslims or any other. So, are you going to do jihad in your own country against mm. your own people, against the Muslims, against a political party? If something goes wrong, 
it's fine if it suits you it's the best thing for you but if it doesn't suit you then you are like uh, 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 asking people for the for god's sake hmm. I was not expecting this from Imran Khan, the well-groomed Nichosonian. I'm an Nichosonian as well. I don't know whether I'm not Nichosonian or he is not Nichosonian. He is provoking the kind of people for a fight. That, that he should, should have, have been shown in in this kind of situation was missing from very you know was missing from when uh, the speaker or the deputy speaker you know the speaker resigned and then the deputy speaker uh, also refused to uh, take oath from uh, Shahbaz Sharif Saab as Prime Minister. We saw that intolerance again being shown uh, from the Office of the President, which is, of course, uh, you know, the highest uh, um, and the most highly respected office of uh, the country when he refused to administer oath to uh, his ministers. So, you know, that kind of intolerance has been shown from day one. Um, when the vote of no confidence happened. First there was this delay, then there was, you know, refusal. And then this, this concept of, uh, you know, loyalty to the appointee rather than the office, uh, which has, uh, you know, permeated uh, as far as the PTI is concerned. We've seen their followers, we've seen, I mean, of course, loyalty is a good thing, but then of course there is this fiduciary duty, there is this, uh, you know, uh, responsibility to office also. And uh, that has to be seen, whether it's the governor, whether it's the president, it has to be shown. You see what, in what image you are, what message you are conveying to the international world? What message you are giving to the international media? What message you are giving to your, uh, to your uh, neighbor? Who is, who, who is like a fox waiting for any moment to scratch you, to attack on you, to attack on your economical issues, to attack on your social issues, to attack on your moral issues, to attack on your uh, borders. So what message we are giving towards the international community and the world? I don't I fail to understand. We need to grow up. You see, you, you are absolutely a, right. The um, president, you know, president went in. Also, he said, I'm not in the position. For, uh, you know, of course, we have a hostile neighbor um, across uh, uh, the border and we've seen the reaction coming from there that their talk shows their media also playing it up um, so again like you are saying the image we are sending out into um, you know the international world is very important and I think that also transcends any political party should transcend any particular party any loyalty one may have any political affiliation one may have right absolutely you are right you see we need to settle down this issue and it can only be settled through the courts. Now all political parties, the people of Pakistan, the bureaucracy, the establishment, every the media, we as being spectators, we all are looking forward for the courts to implement it now. So if the government, if the president of Pakistan do not implement Article 104, do not nominate anybody to take oath from Hamza Shabazz Sharif, who is in majority in numbers as regards the parliamentarian member provincial assembly, this, this issue has to be settled down. It cannot be lingered on. I think so. The courts are going to work even in the uh, holidays of, of Eid, uh, of Eid. And uh, I think so. Uh, this matter needs to be taken up by the judicial side because from the executive or the constitutional side, the uh, administration along with the, uh, the president and the governor, they have miserably failed to implement the constitution Islamic Republic of Pakistan. So uh, in terms of as a law student, in terms of what do you think will be the best case scenario uh, from, you know, of course what's happened has happened, but now what would you say would be the best case scenario? Uh, you know, somebody else being nominated to take the oath if the governor persists. Um, and it, it looks like, you know, there is, uh, there, there doesn't seem to be any movement there. There doesn't seem to be any intention there of administering oath to Hamza Shahbaz Sharif. You see, I, uh, I don't understand why they are so adamant. Because after 15 days, 10 days, 5 days, or mm. the next day, mm. Hamza mm. Shabazz is going to take oath. The, uh, mm. Arif Alvi, mm. uh, the president is remains mm. there or the governor remains there or he doesn't remain there. The oath, nobody can stop the oath because nobody can, uh, can go against the constitution. 
even the courts cannot go against the constitution mm -hmm. so i think so they should realize this thing instead of going into crisis instead of going it into is, uh, on the one hand you know we crisis. all know that constitution is supreme but on the other hand we are also seeing that the provisions of the constitution are being flouted they are being misused you know uh, the timelines within the constitution are being just being misused uh, to create uh, a problem where you know that that's not their intention and then of course recourse to court is something that uh, you know um, hamza shahbaz sharif or you know in this situation hamza shahbaz sharif even when uh, it, it leaves no alternative to the person the, the victim here or the person who is at the other end of uh, you know uh, uh, is suffering at the other end in this case of course hamza shahbaz sharif who is now in the third week of being the incumbent chief minister of punjab but he's not being able to take oath so going to court isn't you know it 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 becomes your only option and then we ask the court to interpret provisions of the law which they have to which they are mandated to do and then there is that argument that starts about how the court should not interfere ideally in proceedings uh, and the separation of powers and all of those things so it has to stop somewhere you know all of this uh, this uh, i would say flag flagrant abuse of of constitutional provisions uh, to get uh, you know benefit out of them to create this kind of havoc which we are seeing at this time you see where it is written in the constitution of islamic republic of pakistan that where the government fails the word is used where the government fails to implement the constitution mm. then mm. the it can only be implemented through the courts of law mm. so the government is is, is is not doing the job as per the constitution which they have to do if they are not going to implement the constitutional amendment then mm. definitely the courts has to make sure that the constitution in the total spirit is being implemented you see this is even against the, there is a provocation against the oath which the president of pakistan has taken as a sadiq and amin and even the governor punjab hmm hmm if the constitutional protection under article 6 is being made out it's going hmm. to have a very very serious repercussions and it will need a very bad precedent and to for the coming leaders to come for the for coming uh, comments to come i think so hmm. it's going to there should be a stop to it now otherwise it's going to be a very very serious repercussion right um you know thank you so much for being with us uh, malik sher khosa sahab thank you for joining us of course like you said it is right oh, now we are into uh, you know uh, more than 3 weeks into uh, the election and of course uh, hamza shahbaz sharif should have been sworn in by now um the affairs of the the province handed over to him in a democratic parliamentary manner which is you know if we want there to be democracy in the country then certainly we need to act like that we need to act uh, as a country which is cognizant of its own duties our our functionary functionaries our uh, you know highest officials um, need to realize that of course they have to uh, follow rules they have to follow procedure and this kind of flouting constitutional provisions is certainly something that has never been seen before um one hopes that there will be uh, some prevalence of sanity and we will see uh, you know the administration of the oath or you know uh, at this time of course there is the, the deadlock that persists um i want to move on and talk about uh, the pakistan china relations um and of course uh, under the you know background of the terrorist attack that happened a few days ago very briefly uh, we have with us zoon ahmed khan who's a journalist from china thank you so much for joining us zoon I hope you can hear me. Okay, there's a problem uh, with audio, but basically, as far as uh, you know, we saw the the attack that had happened, uh, the way the Chinese teachers were targeted, we saw the brutal way in which it happened, and that's basically what I want to talk about. Zoon, can you hear me? Farooq, I can hear you. Can you hear me? ji i can hear you zoon i, I uh, basically of you. course you know one can't condemn this attack uh, enough and overall um as far as uh, you know the back in the background of that overall of course pakistan chinese relations um how do you see this you know of course it seems to be a deliberate attempt to sabotage our relationship with uh, china also um overall how would you see the situation now 
I'll try to be very quick. Maruch, I've lived in this country for almost seven years now. And this attack, which which is on teachers, you know, right. CPEC at the end of the day is a multidimensional cooperation. And the heart of it is that cultural element. And, the, and teachers are, of course, the very core of that heart that I talk about. So right. it's a very tragic attack. We can't condemn it enough. The real question is how are ordinary Chinese people reacting? I think Pakistanis okay. are following what, what the official statements are. Mm. Of course, uh, there is deep condemnation. There is also that confidence that we are together in this. Mm. Uh, we need to do, uh, we need to secure people in mm. a better way. But we understand that this is attempts uh, by mm. others to sabotage the relationship. And I really dug into what Chinese netizens are talking about. And mm. the sentiment is indeed the same that this is an attempt. Chinese are well aware of the geopolitical realities as well. There is uh, There are many attacks against China, anti-China elements that are being provoked in different ways. And this is indeed no exception. But for me, the real question as someone who thinks about how long CPEC can go, how fast we can really progress step by step, is that they do have trust, but they need to have more confidence. And that is the confidence that we really talk about Chinese people should feel safe, should should feel like they want to go to Pakistan. My friends, journalists that I talked to, I expressed that concern. I want Chinese people not to have this association with Pakistan. They said, don't worry, we, we, we will be there. We are there, we, we trust. But I think this is something definitely that we need to think about correct and think of short-term and long-term measures. Overall, as far as uh, our relationship with China is concerned, overall, in terms of, you know, we've spoken about CPEC before also. Um, how do you see the progress? Uh, do you think that this can lead to, um, you know, some kind of tensions? You said, of course, that they do have confidence in us. They have expressed and, you know, reinforced their confidence in our security officials also. Uh, but yeah. like you said, you know, as far as normal Chinese people are concerned, for them to come here. Of course, you know, in the in the light of CPEC, we've been talking about this before, we want there to be the kind of safe environment that encourages the Chinese people. Um, you know, the people-to-people yeah. -people contact and from them to actually travel. Uh, that is all that, that CPEC envisages. And, you know, the potential I couldn't, of... I couldn't right. agree more. Uh, indeed, I mean, yes, we talk about the phase one, where it was more government-to-government, -government, where, of course, there were these... Uh, infrastructure projects and those are SOEs, those are government uh, related. So that is a kind of cooperation that the governments can determine. But really the next steps that we are moving forward towards, it's like you sign an MOU on say culture or you mm -hmm. sign an MOU that or you encourage your uh, businesses to uh, to consider, to think about relocating in the special economic zones in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it's going to be those very logical, very practical considerations, the incentives that Pakistan offers, which of course we have proactively been working towards, and also yeah. the extent to which normal people that are going to uh, cooperate in a very practical sense with Pakistan, mm -hmm. what are their perceptions? So my, my understanding is that, um, of course, it's too soon to make very uh, strong predictions. Uh, it is too soon to say this incident in isolation, what mm -hmm. is the exact impact going to be? I think that Pakistan has always uh, been able to, you know, uh, maintain the confidence and, and we have great confidence with the Chinese mm -hmm. side. Uh, mm -hmm. But at the same time, let's think about uh, how can we provide specifically, you know, better security for the projects? How can, how can that uh, confidence level in the sense that we are able to uh, address this issue in a more uh, in a more uh, specific way, in a better way, how how well is that communicated to ordinary Chinese people who are planning to continue the cooperation? And I would also add that another element, you know, is that scientific collaboration, collaboration between think tanks, collaboration mm -hmm. that's also happening, by the way, online in many cases, which is doing incredibly well, uh, which is about really identifies uh, identifying areas of cooperation between experts on both sides. So I think that dimension is definitely moving forward, moving ahead. I think that uh, in terms of people relocate, locating in Pakistan, we, we are definitely making uh, the right efforts moving forward 
to ensure that that confidence is maintained and further solidified. This is something that Pakistan is, we have, we have a nationwide consensus. And it's something that the Chinese also know that, yes, Pakistan is a friend we trust wholeheartedly. They're not, I mean, they're, they're not many relationships concerned. like this. How do you yeah? think that we can move perception um, of security now? Uh, because, of course, you are there also, and, you know, you're very, I mean, you know, of course, about Pakistan you know, and uh, yes. Maruk, my, uh, my understanding is that, um, you know, of course, uh, let's, we will talk about perceptions. I think in terms of perception, obviously, uh, you know, it's also going to be Chinese people in Pakistan communicating, you know, mm. in, a, and, and they, they have, they have a positive sentiment. Everyone I've talked to, we are all, I mean, we are all grieving this incredible loss. But they have a positive sentiment that, yes, you know, Pakistan is a country that's going to give it, we are giving it our best. And, and we, can, we can be more targeted about that approach. But my, uh, as, as a Pakistani, I mean, I think uh, we need to also understand what are the root mm. causes. These mm. root causes have been mentioned. We, we, when we talk about the SEO, the Shanghai spirit and overall idea, the root causes of these conflicts of our young people becoming susceptible to radicalism are really uh, uh, deeply embedded in economic issues. So I mm. think, I mean, I would say as a Pakistani that we really need to think about the realities of a certain uh, province mm. as well and, and mm. actively address them. No country in the world has not faced these challenges. And the real issue that we are going to address, of course, is how well can we make sure that more Baloch people can have a better life. Look at the poverty level in Balochistan, look at the literacy rates. There needs to be a collective effort on a national level to, to ensure that fewer people from that region are susceptible. So I think that is really something Pakistan can do in the long term. And in terms of perceptions, um, I think, you know, we, we just, uh, these, this cannot happen again and again. Only a few months ago, uh, a similar incident, a very tragic incident also occurred. So. I think uh, it, there's going to be, uh, we need to, we need to try our best and we need to communicate that, um, that level of confidence needs to stay very strong. Of course, strong. with Pakistan also, I mean, I'm, I know that you're also familiar with this, that we are also dealing with multi, uh, you know, multifaceted uh, uh, issues. challenges at this time. Yes. You indeed. know, of course, there is the challenge of across the border hostile neighbor and, you know, yes. the, the in interference that happens from there also. And, of you course. know, overall, as far as economics is concerned, our own economy, our own internal challenges, all of those, uh, you know, challenges, Pakistan is dealing with all of that. Um, yes. In that kind of a situation, of course, long term measures that you mentioned in terms of short term yeah. measures, how hmm. it looks to the Chinese, you're saying, you know, how can we improve that? You know, um, uh, Maruk, I think they are really, you know, my, I actually, I mean, I try to follow the perceptions in Pakistan about Chinese perceptions as well. I actively try and do that. Um, I haven't been able to come back for long, but I'm trying my best to keep up. And I know that many people in Pakistan, you know, they were, of course, um, making different kind of uh, videos or writing articles and they were saying of course it makes sense that the Chinese people will be very sad but also maybe angry. This word that maybe Chinese people are angry was used a few times by a few people so I really tried my best to see is that sentiment here and actually it was not there. They're not angry. They, they understand the very realities that you talk about that we as Pakistanis understand. They are mm. talking about the same realities. They are not okay. angry with Pakistan in any way. So I think in that way, the perception, the perception of Pakistan's intent, the perception of the realities that Pakistan is unfortunately uh, become, becomes a victim of time and again. And these are realities that are the very reason that let's not forget that CPEC was also envisioned. The long term, I mean, the issues are deeply embedded within economic an economic situation if that improves we are able to deal with other issues in a better way as mm. well so mm. this is the intent behind cpec but in the end you know that in that sense i think the perception is definitely positive i'll just say one thing you know i i've been outdoors i mean i i, I there were points i was taking some covid tests and i went to the bank and i said well i showed my passport i'm a pakistani and I, I felt, you know, I felt sad after this incident when I said that. But their reaction was not different towards me. And that touched me more than I think I can say in words. So uh, that sentiment, that positive sentiment towards Pakistan is there. 
confidence hmm. building i think i think generally there is confidence there is a realization that this is of course you know this is a tragic incident and they had realized that pakistanis our own people are also falling victim to these issues right. So it's not like this. They 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 realize all of these uh, these issues, but they're more of them are trying to understand what is the BLA, um, what can be done in a better way to ensure that these attacks do not happen again and again. And I think those efforts that Pakistan can make in the short term to to really you know uh, to target these these organizations in a in a better way, in a way that. actually uh, addresses the issue in a short term way effectively and we've also we you know of course we have a government in place we've it. also had How assurances uh, by yeah. you know of course uh, you know interior ministry by the defense yes. forces all yes. of them you know doing the best they can and to this, co- combat Manfal this kind add, of terrorism i'll quickly add that chinese scholars chinese uh, analysts are also making many uh, you know they're making many contributions on chinese mm. media on chinese mm. social media most netizens are on social media so they're making videos mm. they're trying to explain uh, you know what uh, in a way that a pakistani would explain so in this way they're also helping their people understand the complexities better and mm. restoring any confidence that you know normal people may wonder so uh, it's it's about the, the communication that pakistan makes officially which is definitely the prime minister went directly to the embassy every i mean everyone you know there was an outpour of mm. uh, of a sentiment that you know this is so regrettable people in pakistan are truly uh, in a place that we wish you know we never had to be so they see that they feel it they understand it uh, and at the same time how many more people have been deployed you know what are what are the extra measures that are being taken to make sure that chinese citizens are safer um hmm. maybe just ha- having that information you know if i can tell chinese people well you know this 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 is being done this should be publicly available that okay really more is more visibly is being done and more visibly uh in a better targeted way uh is being done to root out to address these elements and really those economic issues they are the root causes they they, they if they are not addressed even if i know pakistan we all know we have our economic challenges um we are like any other country in many ways you know facing also the pandemic its consequences we have many economic challenges indeed but this also needs to be addressed um this this needs to be prioritized on some level in terms of increasing people to people contact you know um do you think that can improve the perception overall 100% that's why maruf i say that mm. attacking the teachers you know what are the teachers doing the teachers are it's it's a cultural connection you know they they're understanding each other's culture language history becoming friends people to people contact is mm. is the heart is the core of this relationship even when people do businesses if they have friends in pakistan they understand the pakistani culture they are interested in traveling in pakistan all of that makes a difference uh, even the fact that we have more generally you know uh, the pakistanis that have been ever since cpec uh, there have been many more pakistanis in china it automatically makes a difference so that uh, that connection you know between uh, media uh, journalists as well between think tanks all of that it contributes to the quality of our relationship and and that's why you know institute like confucius institute the pakistan study centers they are the they are the, uh, the epicenters that are going to enhance that that people to people interest and and incentivize motivate inspire more people to to uh, interact with each other so the people to people is definitely going to help further in uh, right. in on every that sense. note thank it, you so much for being with us thank you uh, thank Zunem you khan thank you for joining us and your very thank very you. valuable input on uh, pakistan chinese relations uh, particularly in the aftermath of uh, the terrorist attack that happened on chinese teachers of course you know as far as zunis uh, you know she says that she's be, she's in china and she's noticed and she's seen that overall the chinese people's faith in pakistan remains unfettered um and uh, you know they they are as resilient as the pakistanis here to continue the relationship between pakistan and china 
Um, and of course, uh, they are very hopeful that we will see the, vic see the victims apprehended and um, you know, action being taken. They have confidence in Pakistani government uh, that uh, swift action has, uh, has been taken and will be taken. We've also seen uh, their satisfaction with the way that the prime minister immediately visited the Chinese embassy. The officials immediately responded to the attack. Uh, one hopes uh, that these kind of unfortunate, uh, regrettable incidents will not persist. Um, of course, Pakistan is making all efforts uh, that it can to ensure that they don't. Um, on that note, thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.